Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. We are counting down till Christmas. And as we do that, we're spending some time looking at some things that, uh, that other people were hearing and knowing about the coming Messiah as they also waited for his coming. And today we're in the book of Hosea, chapter 11, verse 1. And there's a prophecy here that, uh, that gives us a glimpse of what Jesus' life would look like and some events that would later unfold. And in Hosea, chapter 11, we read this. It says, when Israel was a child, I loved him. And it says this, and out of Egypt, I called my son. Now, we may not realize this in just skimming through this, but uh, Hosea was written uh, roughly 750 years before the birth of Jesus. And that statement, out of Egypt I called my son, may not seem like a prophecy because we think, well, Jesus was from Nazareth. That's where he grew up. That's where he was called to ministry. And then if we maybe dig a little further, we go, well, he was actually born in Bethlehem because of the source of the census. But... It goes a little step deeper. I want to flip over to Matthew chapter 2 real quick for us. And it says this in verse 13, When they had departed, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take this child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to, King Herod, is about to search for the child to kill him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. And this, Matthew tells us as a little editor's note, it says this, Verse 15 was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet out of Egypt. I called my son. As we look at scripture, we see so many examples of how Jesus wasn't just a religious teacher, a great man, a wonderful philanthropist, a motivational speaker. He was something entirely different. And for the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at example after example of prophecies spoken hundreds, if not sometimes thousands of years before he was born, that he perfectly fulfilled each and every one of them. No, none of us could uh, plan this. Jesus had no bearing on where he was born or what happened in the days and weeks and months and years following his birth as he's being carried around as an infant and a toddler. And yet... He's perfectly fulfilling a prophecy that's over 750 years old. And I hope that as we await the Christmas season, that you think back to the, the people of God as they awaited a Messiah and the power that was seeing prophecy after prophecy perfectly fulfilled in the life of Jesus. And as you reflect on these truths over the coming weeks, that it would just encourage you to worship that God had a plan from the foundation of time to save you and I, to send his son Jesus to sacrifice for us, that the plan was, was in motion far before a baby was born in Bethlehem to a, a Mary and a Joseph. The plan was in motion for many, many years and God was perfectly executing his plan also that you and I could be saved and have a relationship with God. So I hope that it draws you to worship him, to be thankful for him, and have just a powerful reason to celebrate this Christmas season. We'll see you next time.